I think it's pretty well established that Battlefield 2042 and I don't have the best relationship. I'm not what you would consider a quote-unquote fan of this game, and when it comes down to it, I'm pushing through all of it because of my passion for the franchise overall and for my viewers, and I think a lot of Battlefield creators are in the exact same boat as I am. With that said, I've always tried to prevent that sentiment from bleeding too heavily into my content, and I try to remain neutral in my videos so both sides and opinions can feel heard. Maybe that's just because I'm a journalist for my real life job and I'm kind of hardwired to play the middle, uh, but I also just don't want to be negative all the time even though there was definitely a period of time in this game where I could have released a video complaining about something different every single day. And I've carried this modus operandi with me to this very day. Now that doesn't mean I just ignore blatant problems or issues as we'll see with today's video, just most of the time I prefer to fight a proxy war and choose my battles. Today, I don't feel like I have that choice. The past week of PR for DICE in Battlefield 2042 has been so baffling and so embarrassing that even I feel forced to get up out of my proverbial lawn chair by the pool and go to the front lines and talk about this shit. And hey, just to put this out there, DICE, if I say anything in today's video that makes you upset or seems like harassment to you, feel free to slap me with one of those seven day bans that you gave to Enders. I'll even give you my origin ID. Here you go. Uh, oh, and the L in my name is actually an uppercase I. Fun fact. Yeah, so make sure you get that right if you're going to ban me. Now, I'm not going to say anything too crazy today. I'm just going to speak my mind, but apparently that's grounds enough for suspensions nowadays on the grounds of harassment. So honestly, go ahead and ban me for giving negative feedback. Do it. Do it. Give in to your anger. Now, I'm probably not the only Battlefield creator that's going to be covering this, and to be honest, I was going to stay out of it, but quite frankly, the events of the last few days have left me very clearly disgruntled, and I'm going to talk about it. Now, some things that I do want to touch on, because these are important to the overall context, but I don't want to spend a huge amount of time talking about them. As I've already alluded to, a few days ago, Enders, who is a prominent streamer and YouTuber in this community, got banned for sustained harassment against DICE developers, and all Enders had to do to secure that bag was name a developer in a video, even though that developer's name and job title were publicly stated in the Battlefield podcast that Enders just so happened to be critiquing in the video. And as you can probably tell, I don't think he should have been banned and agree that this feels more like targeted censorship than punishment for quote-unquote harassment, especially because this happened on the same day as a PR announcement by DICE that said the following, Recently, we have witnessed increased increased harassment towards members of our development team. Across all of our studios, we are open to constructive feedback and criticism about our game, or within the Battlefield community, which that statement is hilarious with context that we'll discuss later. To maintain a healthy and open dialogue, we will protect our teams and people from toxicity and harassment. We believe that this has no place inside our game or within the Battlefield community. And to that, I say, I agree. Complain as much as you want about whatever you want, but harassment of developers is not cool. And if you are some of the people that are harassing these developers, or even worse, sending threatening messages to them, stop it, you're a scumbag. Which, in the case of Enders, I don't think he was purposely being a scumbag. I don't think he was harassing, and I don't think that this was harassment. There are certainly times where I disagree with him, especially in how he handles things, and certainly he is not everybody's cup of tea. But he has never maliciously harass developers. Hell, I'm one of his Twitch mods, so I'm in his stream pretty often, and he'll complain about the game and raise questions about the competency of these developers, but he doesn't type in chat, he doesn't use VoIP, and he certainly doesn't harass developers, he just criticizes their decisions. I think it's pretty fair to say that a lot of people disagreed with Enders' ban, even if they don't particularly like the guy, and even still, there was a fair amount of people that began dancing like the Ewoks at the end of Return of the Jedi when they found out that he did get banned, but if you thought that this was bad, and what happened to Ghost Gaming, in my opinion, is even more baffling. So DICE released a video package last Thursday talking about the upcoming squad management changes, to which they later said that one of the features that was shown in the video package actually isn't going to be part of the changes at all. This feature, of course, is the ability for the squad leader to kick and ban people from squads, kind of the most important aspect of the system and something that has been included in most Battlefield games. Of course, the community was kind of upset about this not appearing in the squad management system, considering that this was something that's been asked for since launch and now DICE are quite literally yanking the dollar on the fishing line away from us. 
This screenshot started making its rounds on the internet. It's an explanation from community manager Stratford about why the kick ban features are not going to be in Battlefield 2042 despite appearing in the developer blog. Now, the explanation that he gives in of itself <laughs> is absolutely astounding, and I'll go over this a little bit later, but what really got me fired up was that Ghost Gaming actually got kicked from the EA Creator Network for posting this screenshot and was only kicked from the Creator Network after DICE started receiving negative feedback from it. On a Twitter thread, Ghost explained that he immediately direct messaged Stratford apologizing for any hate coming his way, but they still kicked him anyways because the leak, quote, ruined an entire month of goodwill with the community by posting posting one screenshot. Ghost admitted that he messed up, not only in showing Stratford's name, but also not asking permission to post the screenshot, but also felt that given his intentions, the contents of the response, and the fact that other creators had posted stuff from that Discord before, he felt as though this was undeserved and petty. Not to mention that Ghost has been creating Battlefield content for close to 10 years and had a clean track record with these kinds of things. He also somewhere said that if Stratford had posted Season 5 content for a example, he obviously wouldn't have shared it, but because the response that Stratford gave only added on to what was already assumed public knowledge, he felt it was safe to share as he wanted to be transparent with the community, both his own and the community abroad. Ghost even went as far as to claim that if the feedback had been positive instead of negative to Stratford's explanation, that he would still be in the creator network. And I agree, especially since if you watched the video that he released yesterday about the situation, which I will leave in the description below, DICE was going to leave him with a warning, but when they saw the harsh feedback, then they decided to kick him. I don't even really know where to start, <laughs> to be honest with you. There are so many small tidbits to this that I can talk about, and I've got so many thoughts right now, the primary one being, how embarrassing of a look is this for DICE, and I do not like how DICE have handled any of this. I've always kind of felt that there was a bit of a one-way mirror in terms of providing and handling feedback with DICE, and the events of the last few days between Enders getting censored and Ghost getting kicked, it's confirmed that bias to me, and it's depressing to me as a creator that my feedback may be completely filtered based on what DICE would like to hear as opposed to what they need to hear. Well, hear this, DICE. Stop sabotaging your game with PR disasters. It's embarrassing. And the way that you're handling feedback is even more embarrassing. You literally cannot escape making yourselves look like total morons when it comes to public relations. Literally, from from the beginning of Battlefield 5 onward, there have been multiple PR breakdowns a title. And in this case, you are grossly overstepping your boundaries. And before I go off on this tangent, because you bet your ass that we're going off script for this video, I know that developers watch my videos, and I know that there are good, hardworking developers at DICE that unfortunately are getting dragged into this due to the poor decisions made by people above them and around them. And for that, I am sorry. I am sorry that some of you are trying to keep your heads down, grind at your workstation, and are genuinely trying to create the best video game possible, but you are actively being sabotaged by this clown behavior. And just to make sure that this part doesn't get swept under the rug here and this gets heard, genuinely, if DICE developers and employees are getting harassed, then that's terrible. And as a community, we need to do better. But with that said, the post about harassment strikes me a little bit too much as do as I say, not as I do. Because I know specifically of a group of streamers and creators that are being harassed daily and has been brought to DICE's attention and nothing has been done about it to my knowledge. Obviously, DICE can't come running at every cry of harassment, but these harassers are doxing, stream sniping, and personally attacking these creators. But when somebody says something a little bit too mean uh, about DICE refusing to put in a requested feature, or says something a little bit too mean about a weapon designer's choices, then that's where there's a harassment problem. I know this has more to do with EA than it does DICE, but protect your players, you goofballs. There cannot be this double standard if you want to be taken seriously. And some of you are probably midway typing this comment right now. Catalyst, why are you so angry about this? Why are you overreacting to this? What's the big deal? It's about the precedent that it sets. If we are getting to a point where DICE can take action against players for saying something that they don't like, 
That is a problem. If we are getting to a point where good, insightful creators like Ghost, who are very passionate about the franchise, are getting kicked without warning for something that's quite frankly a very wishy-washy mistake because they refuse to let DICE scapegoat them, then that's a problem. It is genuinely worse for everybody if we are gradually heading towards a state where the line between feedback and harassment is blurred in the eyes of the developer, and creators are starting to get banned for voicing their opinions, or in Ghost's case, being scapegoated because of a mistake that DICE made. This is not a good look for DICE and it reflects poorly on everybody. And from my point of view, what is the point of providing feedback when behavior like this shows that DICE is more interested in being told good job rather than what the game needs to succeed? Why should I even voice my opinion at all if my negative constructive feedback has the potential to be completely dismissed? Why should you? Regardless if you enjoy the game or dislike it, I don't know how you can look at all of this and feel good about what's going on around here. What are we doing? here, DICE? Why are we censoring and kicking some of the only creators that have stuck around and are left playing your absolute commercial failure of a video game? What happened to Ghost completely baffles me because I don't know if you've watched his content, he is one of the most well-mannered and level-headed creators we have in this community, and him being removed from the EA Creator Network, which is extremely hard to get into by the way, in the manner that he was removed, for the reasons that he was removed, is extremely petty and really exposes some of the politics internally within the development in studio and it's extremely disheartening to me because it shows me that as much as DICE have publicly gone under management changes in the last few years, this has shown me that things have not really changed in one key area, constructive criticism and feedback. Even as far back as Battlefield 5, there were glass doors reviews by disgruntled developers and current employees that highlighted how not only DICE struggled to take constructive criticism from players, but they oftentimes completely disregard it and are surprised when they get negative back backlash. Hmm, this kind of sounds familiar. Let's take an actual look at the, the post that Stratford had here and see what he says. The most important part here is that for Battlefield 2042, DICE felt that having a kick ban system would not promote healthy PTFO behavior if we kicked people from our squad instead of trying to work with each other. What the fuck is PTFO behavior? I, I know what PTFOing is, but what the actual hell is PTFO behavior? I would say that maybe 80% of the time, any attempt to get others to cooperate with you in Battlefield is completely disregarded, and people will play how they want, regardless of the squad they're in. Hell, in my decade of playing Battlefield, never once has the squad that I was in affected my ability to play the objective, apart from uh, snipers or vehicles that camp far away from the objectives and repeatedly make me run across the map, which in that case, I just leave the squad of my own accord. Also, why are we using the concept of PTFO to just Justify a design choice that has everything to do with player interaction and player agency and very little to do with actually playing the game correctly, which is somebody who has his content based around teaching people to play the game correctly. I know that playing the objective can take on many forms and can be interpreted in multiple ways. This to me reeks of having a lack of understanding of your player base, it reeks of a lack of understanding of the game that you make, and quite frankly, it's nothing more than a cop-out, nothing burger excuse for DICE and EA's crusade to protect players' feelings. I don't need to tell you how stupid that is, and honestly, while thinking about it, I hardly even realize when I get kicked from a squad, and in the rare instance that I do realize it, I just assume that they're making room for a friend and carry on. I can't even imagine somebody being sent about getting kicked from a squad, which leads me back to Ghost getting kicked from the EA Creator Network. DICE absolutely kicked Ghost from the network because people saw this soft ass excuse from DICE on the kick ban feature and called them out on it and they couldn't handle the negative feedback from players who have been waiting for squad management features for 18 months just to find out that the most important feature isn't even going to be there. Let's put that, let's, let's rewind that a little bit, put a little bit extra emphasis on it. We've been waiting for squad management features for 18 months just to find out that it's not even going to be included. Now, according to Ghost, they do sign NDAs in these creator networks, uh, 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 
sessions for more serious stuff, but he doesn't believe that there is an NDA on the Discord general chat, which if we need an NDA for a general chat and are getting butt hurt for somebody trying to be transparent with the community for a change, then that's absolutely absurd to me. Here's a crazy thought, Dice. Maybe you shouldn't take out core features from previous titles just to try and add them back in for brownie points 18 months after launch and maybe people wouldn't be so angry about it. And, and this statement here, I think, pisses me off the most. Ghost apparently ruined a month of goodwill. What goodwill? Surely you don't mean articles like this article from PC Gamer where you got a glowing review from somebody that doesn't even play the game enough to know that the Rorsch Railgun doesn't have a shotgun mode. Or from players that purchased the game for free during the PS Plus free month in April and haven't had to endure the last 18 months of you fumbling over yourselves while you try to remember how to make a damn good Battlefield game and failing at even that. You know... And I think I'll close with this. There is a movie, one of my favorite movies of all time. It's called Whiplash. There's this character played by J.K. Simmons in the film. And in the film, he says something to the effect of, there are no two words in the English language that are more damaging than good job. I don't know if it's just a case where Dice has just heard good job too much recently to where all the criticism is now unwarranted and, and, and unfair, but if that's the case, let me remind you that we should not even be needing to tell you good job for adding features and changes that were in previous Battlefield games at launch and should have been in this game at launch too. Now. If you're still watching the video, first of all, thank you. It's not my normal type of content to just rant, and it's certainly not a side that I like to show very often, but this has left me, as I said, very disgruntled and quite shocked, and honestly, my sentiment for the past few days is like, damn, this really doesn't feel like a community that I want to be a part of, but obviously, I love Battlefield. I am very passionate about the franchise, and I think this hurts more than anything. It it's shocking because you want the developers of one of your favorite franchises to be better. We all need to be better, and that's kind of what I want to walk away with. DICE needs to be better. If we are harassing DICE developers, we need to do better. Everybody just needs to be better, because the, the current atmosphere, if that's even the right word, is not good enough. How far gone is Battlefield if the relationship between developers and players is this misunderstood and this tense? It's, it's just sad. It's sad, and the actions taken against both Enders and Ghost is frustrating. Why should I even bother playing or leaving feedback for a better Battlefield? If this is the way the dice are going to treat creators, why should you even play or leave feedback when the events of the last few days even more so point towards our feedback going in one ear and out the other depending on whether or not the feedback is positive or negative? I'll leave you all with this. If you want to know more about the situation, a video was made by Moidog that explains everything in pretty good detail, so you should go watch that. I'll leave that in the description. It's certainly a lot more level-headed than my video is, but honestly, I'm I'm disgusted and disheartened this, that, that one of my favorite franchises continues to reach new lows, even if those lows aren't even in the game. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure that you leave a like and please leave a comment on what you think about this entire situation in that comment section below. Please be respectful both towards me and towards other people in the comment section. Uh, and if you liked the video just that much, consider subscribing for content that's not me ranting off script about some stupid mistakes that uh, DICE and the community are making. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Catalyst. I'll see you all another time.